Welcome to third session of Strategy Execution Training of Strategy Academy sponsored by Frui Strategy. The objective of this training course is to help strategy management professionals who just started career, managers who would like to learn about strategy execution, everyone who are keen to get trained in strategy execution. The course is designed based on the methodology of execution premium, XPP, of Dr. Kaplan and Dr. Norton, who introduced the balanced scorecard concepts to strategy world. We shall support attendees by answering questions, comments, and possible help through Zoom calls at scheduled sessions. Session 2 explains you about the topic Translate the Strategy. Let us see the agenda of the courses. So far, we completed Session A and Session B, which covers Introduction and Development of Strategy Part. In case if you missed the sessions, please attend earlier sessions. In this session, we shall talk about very critical topic, translate the strategy. We discuss about strategy map, strategic themes, strategic objectives, and strategic measures. This is the most important step in balanced scorecard implementation. The agenda include strategy map and strategic themes, defining measures and targets, defining, prioritizing, and managing strategic initiatives and portfolios, Aligning human capital to strategy by identifying strategic job families. Strategic funding slash aligning budget to strategy straytex. Selecting meaningful KPIs and setting targets. Let us take a deep dive into stage two of Translate the Strategy. We shall discuss strategy maps, scorecards, and strategic themes. Let us look at six stages of the execution premium methodology. We completed stage one where the strategy is developed. Stage 2 discuss about translating the strategy. We talk about strategy map, theme, objectives, measures in this session. Look into the slide. We discuss about four perspectives financial, customer, internal processes, and learning and growth. A strategy map describes how the enterprise creates value for shareholders and customers. In recent update of execution premium methodology, Dr. Kaplan and Dr. Norton recommended to use the perspectives like outcomes, stakeholders, processes, and enablers. How to define perspective depends on your type of organization and nature of your business and department. In this slide, you can see financial perspective talk about three strategic objectives, namely sustained shareholder value, revenue growth, and productivity. Similarly, in customer perspective, you can see possible strategic objectives for product and service attributes, which are price, quality, time, and function. You can see relation and brand also as strategic objectives. The strategic objectives will be identified to close the gap in strategy which are identified in strategy formulation. While making strategy maps, you can revisit the strategy formulation and come up with strategic objectives. For internal processes, you might have themes related to operations management, customer management, innovation, and regulator and social processes. For learning and growth perspective, usually the strategic objectives include human capital, information capital, and organizational capital. We shall discuss details in the coming slides. Let us take the strategy translation deep dive. The balanced scorecard starts with the financial objectives by asking question. What are the drivers of long-term sustainable value creation? Usually there are two critical things when we look at financial perspective. Organizations generally look for generate revenue growth in one hand and achieve productivity on other hand. You can see the strategic objective showcasing this. Enhance existing customer value. Expand revenue opportunities. Improve cost structure. Increase asset utilization. We need to have measures for each strategic objective. This is the crux of balanced scorecard framework. In the table, you can see all five strategic objectives and the measures against each. For example, for strategic objective, increase shareholder value, there are three measures identified. Return on capital employed, ROS. Economic value added. Market to book ratio. Similarly, you can read the measures against all strategic objectives of financial perspective. To continue defining strategic objectives for customer perspective, you can see following strategic objectives shown in the diagram. Customer profitability. Customer satisfaction. Market share. Customer acquisition. Customer retention. Usually the above objectives are popular objectives for customer perspective. You can choose your objectives of your choice. We can take a deep dive into customer outcome objectives. The slide shows the list of customer objectives and their corresponding measures. There could be level one measures and they can have sub measures as level two. In the example, if you look at the strategic objective, achieve customer satisfaction and loyalty, you can see following possible measures. 
customer satisfaction in targeted segments, percent growth in revenue from existing customers, account share, sheriff wallet, net promoter score, willingness to recommend. Likewise, you can see the measures for other customer perspective strategic objectives. We can have more detailed strategic objectives for customer perspective, which may cover product slash service attributes, relationship, and image. Usually organizations offer customers a setup value, which may include price, quality, availability, selection, functionality, service, partnership, brand. You can review what is it your customer perceive for your products or service or total solution provided by your organization. Select them appropriately. Selecting right objectives is your strategy. Customer objectives for three value propositions which are most popular. Low total cost. Product leadership. Customer intimacy or customer solutions. You can see for low total cost you can be a low cost supplier. Deliver consistent high quality. Provide a speedy and easy purchase. Offer appropriate solution. For product leadership value proposition you can offer high performance products. Be first to market. For customer solution value proposition, you can provide customized solutions. Sell multiple products and services to customers. Deliver excellent post-sales service. Develop personalized relationships. What is your company value proposition? Here's the template that show you possible measures for three different value propositions. First part shows the objectives and measures for low total cost. Second part shows the objectives and measures for product leadership. Third part shows the objectives and measures for customer solution. You can look at them carefully. Each industry has its specific type of objectives and measures. You need to choose your value proposition based on your organization strategy. Next, identify the critical processes that will create the value proposition for customers and the productivity improvements for shareholders. You can see four process themes in process perspective. Operations management processes, customer management processes, innovation processes, regulatory and social processes. These processes or themes will drive your organization to generate value to customer. We shall look at operations management objectives and measures to understand better. This is to help you to understand the processes and help you define relevant objectives. You can see two objectives in the table. One, improve the cost, quality, and cycle times of operations. For this objective, you have five typical measures displayed. Supplier scorecard ratings, quality, delivery, cost, cost per unit of output, product and process defect rates, cycle times, lead times, order to delivery. Two, improve asset utilization, capacity utilization, percent, equipment reliability, percent of time available. You need to choose right measures for you. We shall look at customer management objectives and measures to understand better. This is to help you to understand the processes and help you define relevant objectives. You can see three objectives in the table. Acquire new customers. Satisfy and retain existing customers. Generate growth with customers. Each objective has measures displayed in the right side of the table. We shall look at innovation objectives and measures to understand better. This is to help you to understand the processes and help you define relevant objectives. You can see two objectives in the table. Achieve excellence in research and development processes. Develop innovative products and services. Each of the objective have corresponding measures at the right side. We shall look at social and regulatory objectives and measures to understand better. This is to help you to understand the processes and help you define relevant objectives. You can see two objectives in the table. Improve environmental, health, and safety EHA's performance. Enhance reputation as good neighbor. Each of the objective have corresponding measures at the right side. Let us discuss most important perspective learning and growth. The balance scorecard finishes by aligning people, systems, and culture to the strategic processes. We will have objectives covering human capital, information capital, organizational capital, and other enablers. We shall discuss one important topic strategic job families and how they are determined for process objectives. To perform processes and achieve the desired results, we need to have the people who are ready to do their jobs as required and prepare the organization to find and retain right talent at critical jobs. The steps are as below. Identify critical internal processes from the organization's strategy map. Identify key skills and competencies required for each strategic process. 
Identify categories of jobs in which these key competencies can have the biggest impact on enhancing the organization's critical internal processes. Look at the slide showing how employees and strategic job families drive process excellence. If you look at the process perspective, the processes are identified which delivers value. You can identify strategic job family against the key process and also identify how many numbers you need them. The number of employees in that strategic job family depend on type of size of organization. We can look at the full list of strategic job families and key competencies in the illustrated example. You can find out total number of employees required by the process and derive the competency profile. This is the input for you to prioritize the hiring, training, retaining, and promoting employees. Once we identify the competency and number of employees required, the leadership team can assess the human capital readiness as shown in the bottom of table. It could be green which shows readiness and red which shows gap and yellow to be alert. Now let us convert all the requirements of learning and growth into strategic objectives. You can see the strategic objectives as below. For human capital, we have three objectives. Develop strategic competencies. Attract and retain top talent. For information capital, we have two objectives. Develop customer data and information systems. Share information about customers. For organizational capital, we have two objectives. Create a customer-centric culture. Align employees' goals to success. Against each strategic objective, you can choose required measures. This is the example strategy map for your understanding. This is the theme-based strategy map. You can see the strategic objectives in next slide. The strategy map with strategy themes and objectives with linkages is clearly seen. The strategy map with strategy themes and objectives with linkages is clearly seen. Just to summarize, strategic themes offer many benefits. The following are the benefits of using strategic themes. Target setting. Accountability. Resource allocation. Alignment. Execution. Reporting and governance. Let us look at the questions to ask when creating a theme-based strategy map. This slide shows you the different questions to be asked while creating theme-based strategy map. For example, for financial perspective, question you might ask is, what emphasis are you putting on costs slash productivity? What returns do your shareholders expect? Where is growth expected to come from? Similarly, continue asking questions for all perspectives. The guidelines for strategic objectives are illustrated here. 15 to 25 objectives per scorecard. No more than 20% in financial perspective. Perhaps 40% in process perspective where the strategy gets executed. Every objective must have at least a verb and a noun. Good. Provide customer-focused solutions. Bad. Customer satisfaction. Avoid including projects as objectives. Bad. Implement CRM system. Good. Understand customer behavior. Write customer perspective objectives in the voice of the customer. Example. Help me manage my finances. The guidelines for number of strategic measures. At least one measure for each strategic objective. No more than 25 to 35 measures or one and a half measures per objective. Strive for outcome or output measures, not inputs. It is very important to select meaningful KPIs and set stretch targets. The Balanced Scorecard Performance Model describes the organization's strategy for creating shareholder, stakeholder, value. If we look at each perspective, financial performance, a lag indicator, measures the tangible outcomes from the strategy. The customer value proposition defines the source of value. Strategic processes create value for customers and shareholders. Aligned intangible assets drive improvement in the strategic processes. This is how the value creation take place in Balanced Scorecard. Strategic initiatives are the drivers that create change and value. This is one of the most important part in strategy execution. Look at internal process improvement objective. This objective has a measure which has targets. To close performance gap, strategic initiatives are launched. The strategic initiative is set of projects or programs necessary to close the strategic performance gap. The concept is explained in more detailed. Strategic objective is a hypothesis of how we create value. Measures are the language of business. Targets defines how much to achieve to deliver results. And initiatives create action to close gap. How to fix targets. This is something very critical. 
Target setting is used effectively with operational and financial management system. Target setting is not used effectively with strategy management systems. Strategy execution requires effective targets to set expectations, build credibility, guide investments, and manage results. What does success look like? You can see the Hall of Fame of Strategy Execution through Palladium. The list of Hall of Fame companies for illustration. How Hall of Fame companies are achieving results. You can see the illustration. What is BHAG Big Harry Audacious Goals? Collins and Porus in his book, Built to Last, observed that some visionary companies use bold missions as a particularly powerful mechanism to stimulate progress. All companies have goals, but there is a difference between merely having a goal and becoming committed to a huge daunting challenge. Abhag engages people. People get it right away. It takes little or no explanation. For example, grow the profits of the business by 50% by 2024. To be one of the best five governments in the world. The problem with the bags is, how do I make my BHAG come true? They are lag indicators. The BSC performance model defines the drivers that create BHAG outcomes. Look at financial perspective of one of Hall of Fame company. Another Hall of Fame company, KeyCorp. The guideline for target setting for financial objectives. Set a financial BHAG that will double or triple financial value over a three-year period, norm. 150%. Develop financial drivers for revenue growth, 120%, and profit growth, 180%, that support the BHAG. Based on the performance of BSC or Hoff companies. Hell of Fame Company Customer Perspective. Another example. Look at Hall of Fame customer performance. Look at some companies, how they have performed. Let us discuss about the guidelines for target seating for customer objectives for Hall of Fame companies. For example, reduce customer dissatisfaction by 50% over a three-year interval. BSC Hall of Fame success story for internal processes. Look at the best practice example. Look at the internal perspective example. How Hall of Fame companies performing for strategic processes, another example. Guideline for target for internal processes. Select a set of two to four key processes that have a dominant impact on the strategy. Targets should strive for 50% improvements in performance over a three-year interval. Hall of Fame success model for learning and growth perspective. Look at Hall of Fame for human capital development as an example. Let us look at target setting for learning and growth. Identify the human capital process that creates staff engagement and or staff development. Set a target to improve employee satisfaction by 20% over the next three years. Set a target to reduce employee turnover by 50% in the next three years. Strategy requires different types of measures. Execution measures. Measures that either drive performance drivers or reflect performance outcomes within the strategic action cycle, typically quarterly. These measures describe internal activities that can be acted upon by the organization. Achievement measures. Externally derived and or slow moving measures that indicate a sustainable advantage which allows a company to grow earnings over time. You can look at both type of measures in the table. Achievement measures for financial performance are illustrated here. Look at credit rating, bond rating shown in the list. Some Hall of Fame success stories. Execution measures and achievement measures for internal processes are illustrated in this slide. Execution measure examples. Overall plant effectiveness equals 98.7%. Non-performing loans decreased 11 consecutive months. New product revenues up 48%. Production lead times reduced 25 days to 2 days. Cost reduction up 187%. Number of accidents per year drop from 14 to 0. Achievement measure examples. Integrated industry value chain. COSO-based risk assessment composite. First to produce in next generation factories. Six Sigma process improvement composite. Government awards for energy efficiency. Government award for safety. Achievement measures are frequently related to the development of a competency needed to better manage a strategic process. Let us look at typical achievement measures of learning and growth. O competitive compensation levels. O ranked number one employer in country slash sector. O ranked best managed company. O succession plan. 
O Future Leader Readiness Plan Execution versus Achievement Measures Look at the summary to give you an idea about both. Can you identify execution measures and achievement measures for your organization? Why do we need achievement measures? The goal of management system is to have performance improvement and sustainability. Sustainability leads to higher P-E ratio. Look at Balanced Scorecard Performance Model now. It will be a refreshing to see the model now to understand better. Case Study of Low-Cost Airlines You can see the targets. Strategic initiatives must be clearly focused on closing performance gaps defined by the strategy. Look at the example of low-cost airlines how they have defined measures, targets, and initiatives. One initiative is not enough to execute a strategy and ITT requires a portfolio of several initiatives. The initiatives are interdependent and can't be treated on a standalone basis. Combine all related initiatives and you may create a program. If you have many initiatives, you can also define a portfolio. Strategic expenditure is the funding for strategic initiatives. Interdependence, the value of an intangible asset is influenced by its interaction with other intangible assets. It is difficult to isolate the value of one asset. Look at the slide where the budget is defined against each initiative. The funding for each initiative needs to be allocated in the budgets. Funding the strategy, linking strategy to the budget through Straytex. We can see operational budget, capital budgets, and Straytex and how this is included in budget. This is very important concept of budgeting process. Funding the strategy is very critical to execute strategic initiatives and portfolios. Look at the process of top-down process and bottom-up process. The resource conflict can be balanced and arrived at the appropriate funding level. Some research results are illustrated for better understanding. The BSC Hall of Fame success model provides a framework to set targets and expectations for successful strategy execution. Revisit the Hall of Fame Strategic Performance Composite. How to launch a BSC project. Five steps defined. Define strategic destination. Identify key themes driving strategy. Build strategic objectives and linkages. Determine measures and targets. Inventory, map, and select and prioritize initiatives. It will take 8 to 12 weeks to do it in formal process. Typical balanced scorecard project schedule can be seen here. Step zero is the kickoff in week one. Step one is the defined strategic destination. Step two is the identify EY themes driving strategy. Step three is to build strategic objectives and linkages. It will take four weeks to do step one, two, and three. Step four is to determine measures and targets and it will take four weeks. Step five is to inventory, map, and select initiatives for four weeks. Phases 1 to 3 establish the foundation for the balanced scorecard. Workshop 1 will be to finalize the strategy map. Inputs for Workshop 1 is Executive interviews and background strategic research. Output for Workshop are strategic destination and strategy map. Phase 4 is for measures and target development. The inputs are Refined strategy map Existing measures assigned to objectives Draft measures developed with executives one-off meetings the outputs are 90% complete linkages, 80% complete measures, measures development plan in place, workshop 3 scheduled. Phase 5 is to select portfolio of strategic initiatives. The workshop is conducted with inputs, refined linkages and measures, inventory of existing initiatives, proposed new initiatives, initial mapping of initiatives to objectives. The outputs of workshops are gaps in strategic initiatives identified, Plan for initiatives rationalization established. We adopted seven-step approach to achieve strategy execution. Hope you have understood the most important session for strategy translation. Contact us for any queries and clarifications.